Welcome everybody, I'm Sean Murphy, and tonight we are celebrating 75 years of Highland Catholic School. It's the Swing Diamond Jubilee. A quick reminder tonight, uh, the auction closes at eight o'clock, so you have one hour to get your bidding in. So keep a close eye on those bids, everyone. This is the fun part, to watch it and to keep bidding. Thanks, Sean, I'm Amy Murphy, and Sean and I are so proud to be a part of the group of Swing Chairs. Over 20 years ago, Swing started in really a grassroots approach. Creative parents led by Giggles and Fran Ring came together. It's evolved into what we have tonight, a live virtual event. So to tonight's program, which you can look forward to, we're going to be celebrating 75 years and we're gonna have representatives from the generations that have attended St. Leo's Highland Catholic. We're gonna have some special music incorporated. And of course, we're all looking forward to the tuition and travel raffle prizes. As a quick reminder, we have a hotline. If you have any questions, technology related, navigating, I want you to call 651-698-5581. Mrs. Katie Atlas is at the phone and she'll be available to help you. Another way we want you to engage is post your pictures. Use the hashtag PoundSwing2021. Post those pictures on Facebook and Instagram. We're excited to see how you're celebrating swing from your homes. So as we move forward, we're going to start the evening with Father Paul and the travel raffle. So Father Paul, thank you so much for being here tonight. Hi. Thank you for being here online. We're so happy that you're all here with us today. Um, I'd like to say a couple words uh, on this anniversary. It's 75 years of the school, and uh, something cannot last that long, let alone thrive, if it hasn't been for the faithful generosity and support of parents generations past, so that they're, they're kind of flipping it towards the future. And I think we all know that how much it takes to educate our children, to bring them up in the faith, to bring them up towards uh, this kind of excellence that we have here at Highland Catholic. So I'm very pleased to be here with you tonight, and I just pray that we can be continue this long tradition of, of excellence here at, at Highland Catholic. So with that, I want to. I'm not going to go on forever like I do on the homilies. So uh, so let. No clapping there in the corner. Uh, uh, so what I want to do now is just to, uh, we're going to do the, uh, the raffle. The winner can choose from one of these following things, just as a kind of a prelude to this. You can either do the Cult Winemakers VIP Access, or the Disney World Family Adventure, or the Belize All-Inclusive Trip. So that's what's, what's at stake here. And this little barrel here has all the names of people who have put in. So we're going to do this now, and I promise there's nothing up my sleeve. And a drum roll. The winner is Kira Bodet. So congratulations, Kira. Thank you, Kira. Thank you.
you so much, Father Paul, for being here tonight and drawing that fabulous prize. Kira, you're going to be contacted tomorrow for the planning for your trip. We're so happy for you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to introduce our first speaker now. Now, in true St. Paul fashion, I'll start out by saying Cassie is married to my second cousin, Mike Adam. So that's a wonderful piece of introduction. But what we're thrilled about in celebration is Cassie, in addition to being our preschool director, is an alum of St. Gregory's. Following St. Greg, she continued her Catholic education at Durham Hall and St. Kate's. Cassie, thanks so much for being here. Thank you, Amy. Now, I'm a Benny, not a Katie. <laughs> but we love the Katies, too. <laughs> And I am, uh, it was honored when Amy and Sean um, asked me if I'd share my experiences growing up as a graduate of St. Gregory School. I'm a product of Catholic education, uh, first grade through graduate school. And the only reason I didn't attend uh, Catholic kindergarten was because there wasn't Catholic kindergartens when I was in kindergarten. So I, um, I went to Catholic school from uh, first grade through grad school. And as I reminisce about my time at St. Greg's, I think about the many hats that I've worn over the years. So because I'm a teacher, and a teacher needs visuals to help her students learn, I brought my mom's hat box as a visual to show you all the different hats that I've worn over the years. This truly was, I think it was my grandma's before it was my mother's. Hat number one, St. Gregory's. A St. Gregory student and a daughter. I think of Lumen Christi as the Trinity. I think of it as three different parts coming together to make the whole. So it was St. Leo, St. Greg's, and St. Therese, and I was part of St. Greg's. I attended grade school, um, as I said, first through eighth grade, and it was a really special community. My parents had phenomenal friends, wonderful friends in their school and, and uh, faith community. And that's something that I remember from growing up that I see very much a part of Highland Catholic today. My parents were involved at St. Greg's. My dad was the president of the men's club. My mom was the president of the women's guild. She was instrumental in starting the book fair, something that's still going on today. She was also instrumental in the Angel Tree Project, something that's still going on today. And what is now the social justice group came out of, the, of uh, my mom's uh, social work skills. Um, and so from St. Greg's, I realized how important that strong faith-filled community was. And I realized that someday, if I was ever a mom, I would want that for my kids. So, I went into education. The education that I received um, from my formative years with my folks at St. Greg's and then at Durham Hall, the College of St. Benedict. St. Kate's was a little too close, so I had to go all the way up to St. Ben's. Um, the University of Minnesota and then the uh, University of St. Thomas really led me to my uh, desire to become a teacher and uh, hopefully uh, share those gifts with others. So, I put on another hat. I was asked to be on the school board at Highland Catholic before we had children. Uh, because I, at that time I was teaching at uh, St. Odelia's in Shoreview and they wanted someone on the school board who didn't have children in the school just to give a different perspective. I think I spent, I don't know how many hours writing policy um, and borrowing a few from St. Odelia's. When I was on the school board at, uh, at Highland Catholic, it was the beginning of swing, the first swing. And I knew when I saw this community come together for swing, I, that's what I would want for my kids. The motto back then was, it's for the kids. It's for the kids. It's for the kids. And I've seen how that impact really helps students grow, graduate, and then share their gifts with the community. So I became a mother and a school parent at Highland Catholic. Because of my work on the school board and my belief in Highly Catholic, my husband and I really, it was, there was no other choice than to send our children here. It was the best, it was the best around. So my daughter Maeve, son Liam, son Emmett, all received a quality education here at Highland Catholic that prepared them for high school, it prepared them for college, and it prepared them to be good people in the world beyond. Then I'm getting to my next hat. Preschool director. Ten years ago, I put on this new hat. 
I'm now the preschool director at Highland Catholic and have been for the last 10 years at, at, the, at the birth, at the beginning. When I had the opportunity to create a program at Highland Catholic in a parish led by Father Paul with a wonderful boss, Jane Schmidt, I, I applied. I, I had to have this job. And I was thrilled that, um, that I, I got it. And um, I really, Jane always says she has the best job in the world, but we all know what's better than being with three, four, and five-year-olds. I have the best job in the world. So all those many hats bring me back to my time at St. Greg's, which has led me to this role as preschool director and really the formation of who I am today. I'm truly, truly blessed to be part of this community. I hope and pray that we will continue to sustain this dynamic community, and I hope that you'll give tonight. I'm not really a good salesperson. I'm much better at education, but this is a really good product here. I promise you, your dollars will be well, well spent. It's, as Giggles would say, it's for the kids, but it's kids who grow up in a faith-filled community and really make this world a better place. So thanks for giving tonight, and thank you, Amy. Thank you, Cassie. Sean and I have four children, and our youngest, who's also named Maeve, was a part of that first preschool class. It was just a pleasure to be a part of that and to get to know Cassie all the better. Say, before we introduce our next speakers, I want to give a real shout out to our sponsors. We've had four platinum level sponsors this year. Thank you to Bob and Ann Maley from Maley Dentistry. Thank you to Visitation School. Thank you to St. Thomas Academy. Thank you to Highland Bank. Your donations, your sponsorship make all the difference in our first 75 years at Highland Catholic and beyond. Our next speakers I'm so thrilled to have is the first, in fact, of two high C speakers tonight. Ruby Geiger is a seventh grader at Highland Catholic. She's joined by her brother, Charlie, who attended Highland Catholic and now is a part of the ROTC program at Creighton Durham Hall. Thanks for being here tonight. Hi, my name is Ruby Geiger. I am finishing seventh grade this year and I have been a student at Highland Catholic School since preschool. This is my brother, Charlie. He also went to High C and is now in 10th grade at Creighton Durham Hall. For High C Swing tonight, I will tell you about what High C means to me. The first thing that I'll say is that I really love my school. I have had a great group of classmates I've attended school with for many years. The other things I love, the teachers of course, some have been hard and give a lot of homework, but they are all caring people who want us to learn and push ourselves to do our best, and they will always take extra time to help if needed. Each year, as I walk through the school halls, I see my favorite teachers, and it makes me feel good. Because of them, I know I will be prepared for high school and beyond. When I come to school, I feel like part of a community. It feels good that we all know each other, the staff in the office and the teachers know our name. Even Ms. Schmidt, our principal, knows our name and greets us every single morning as we walk into school. We see many parents and grandparents around the school too, volunteering in classrooms, in the office, at lunch, for home and school, and many other things. It makes us feel good that our families are involved in helping. I was also glad that we were able to start coming right back to school through most of this hard year. The staff and the teachers all worked hard to make it possible, and it worked. Even with mask wearing, distancing, and working in smaller student pods, I feel like I've had a school year full of learning. I will remember this school when I'm gone. It is a special place, and I will remember the great things we've all done over the years for our community and those in need. I have so many memories, from the backpack program, to making and delivering May baskets throughout the neighborhood, to all school masses, to Catholic Schools Week, to the High Sea Marathon, to the Super Friends program, and Reading Buddies. The list goes on. High Sea is a special place where we put our hearts and minds to work to be examples of God's love. So on this 75th anniversary of our school and tonight's High Sea Swing, thank you for supporting our great school. Oh, and one more thing. Please donate a lot. <laughs> Thank you, Ruby. Thank you, Charlie. 
So as you may know, as you are looking at the registration site and now on our live site with Greater Giving, there's a field in which you can make a cash donation. And I want to thank so many of you who have already made those cash donations. Here are a few. Alyssa Lawler, $100. Renee Hawthorne, $50. Meredith Tessier, $100. Amanda Brooks, $100. Sarah Youngerman, $190. Thank you for your generosity to our school. Our next speakers actually represent legacy families as a part of St. Leo's and Highland Catholic. Next, we have Jenny Flynn Rosemark and Tim Flynn. Thanks for being here tonight. Yeah. Sure. Thanks, Amy. Thanks for having us. Hi, my name is Jenny Rosemark, and this is my brother, Tim Flynn. We grew up in Minneapolis, but moved to St. Paul when we married entrenched St. Paulites. And we know mm -hmm. how that goes. Um, we had some connection to St. Paul as our dad grew up here and went to St. Leo's. All four of my kids went to Highland Catholic from 2002 to 2016. Hi, my name is Tim Flynn. I have three kids that have gone to High C from, uh, <clears throat> we started in 2009 to now. My youngest is graduating from uh, high C this spring, and um, Amy asked us to talk today about our experiences with High C and why we chose High C for our kids. Our dad went to St. Leo's and gradu graduated from there and uh, from here in 1956. He went on to graduate from Creighton, uh, from my alma mater, St. John's University, and uh, Georgetown Law School. He had a lot of family, we had a lot of cousins in St. Paul, so we spent a lot of time here when we were kids. Um, every time we drove by uh, what used to be St. Leo's, now Highland <laughs> Catholic, uh, he would tell us of a story how he and his buddies, uh, their last day of eighth grade, took rocks and baseball bats and broke all the windows in what's now the cafeteria. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> he, Not uh, recommended. They, of course, got caught, and he spent the entire summer uh, cleaning up the school. Uh, we were never quite sure if he told us that story as a way to teach us a lesson not to break windows, uh, or if it was a badge of honor, we think it might have been a, a little bit of both. My dad and I worked together in the last 20 years, and while my kids went to Highland Catholic, one day I was looking at old pictures in the hallway between the office and the gym at Highland Catholic, and I found this picture, which is my dad's graduating class of eighth grade in 1956. So I asked Mrs. Schmidt if I could take it to show my dad. Now, my dad could not remember anyone's name. He could barely remember our That's names. Yep. Um, and so I brought him this picture, and he took it, and he was able to go through and identify every kid on this picture and kind of, you know, going back to how great it was to go to Catholic school and what a, you know, how those memories of the kids you meet and the friends you make when you're in grade school at Highland Catholic St. Leo's was so important. <clears throat> So Catholic education was very important to our dad and our mother. We all went to Catholic school in Minneapolis. Um, he was so proud to have gone to Catholic grade school, and it was important to him to give us the, that same experience, um, Catholic school experience that he did. It was clear that his love of Catholic education started here at uh, St. Leo's. When Dennis and I were figuring out where to send our kids to school, my dad brought up St. Leo's, now Highland Catholic, and we were looking at it for our kids. Um, he told us about the great education he got there, the community that it had kind of built around it, which I think is pretty similar to this day as it was, you know, 1956. And he was always very proud that he attended St. Leo's and wanted the same for our kids. When Dennis and I were deciding where to send the kids, my dad's words struck a chord with us. <clears throat> Dennis and I both went to Catholic grade schools and enjoyed our experiences there. We were debating between Nativity and Highland Catholic, and the fact that my dad went to St. Leo's and had such great things to say about it and the community tipped the scales in our decision about where to send our kids, and we sent them to Highland Catholic and are very thankful that we did that. So Jamie, my <laughs> wife, and I have a very similar story. We were looking at various Catholic schools uh, around the neighborhood and um, saw that uh, the great education Jenny and Dennis' kids had received here at Highland Catholic. Uh, we also heard the wonderful stories about the community uh, that Highland Catholic had, uh, so we were in. I guess to sum up, we have my dad's experience at Highland Catholic to thank for being one of the reasons we chose Highland Catholic for our own kids. It's been a great experience, and uh, we're happy to continue supporting Highland Catholic. 
So to sum up, if you could just, you know, it's for the kids, like Giggles right. always <laughs> used to say. Um, for the kids. You know, support Highland Catholic. It's great. And I just want to give a shout out to whoever did the May Baskets because we got one at our door yesterday. And it just warmed my yeah, heart and brought stuff. me joy. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Well, thank you, Jenny and Tim. It's wonderful when we hear from the legacy families in our community, and we have so many. And I love when we hear from teachers, including Mr. Ken Bakke, when he's teaching the children of his first students, too. It's pretty terrific. I wanted to do a shout out for the many, many volunteers who worked tirelessly behind the scenes to make this event a success. Sean and I started last August and together with sponsorship, with the team who organized the terrific curbside food today, to the gal in the boxes, business donations, all of the very, very generous families who donated. Thank you. Now one piece that certainly I grew up with, I was at my mom's hip. We volunteered together. And I'm so thrilled that my mom's here behind the scenes witnessing this. So many of the parents involved in the 2021 swing volunteering brought their children with, and we gave those shout outs in our program. So thank you to the volunteers, but a very, very special thank you to the children that volunteered with their parents to make tonight a success. Hey, I'm gonna do a call out of some of our first premier auction items. As a reminder, our premier items will be open until 10 p.m. So the motto goes, bid and bid often. Here we go. Here's the first item, package number 2000. It's a pack of four Vikings tickets and dinner at Douay Restaurant. Enjoy a dinner at Douay with $200 worth of gift cards and Vikings tickets at U.S. Bank Stadium. You'll work with the donors to arrange the date that you'll be attending the, that game. The next package is number 912. 912. It's a pack of four twins tickets and dinner at Green Mill Restaurant. Coupled with that, we have twins pitcher signed baseballs from Burt Blylevin, Jose, I don't know how to say these names properly, so check your programs. Jose, Jake, these signed baseballs are worth $150. Once again, you will work with the donors of those tickets to arrange the date for that game. Hey, here's the next item, package number 905, Canoe Bay Weekend. This is an item that's generously donated by Bob and Maury Evans, and it is a popular item from year to year. If you are looking at package number 905, be sure to keep a close eye on it because I anticipate those, that bidding keeps going up. Two more items, everyone. Here we go. Package number 911, golf for four at the Troy Burn Golf Club in Hudson, along with dinner at the Crooked Pint. You'll enjoy a nice meal at Crooked Pint, followed by a terrific game of golf in beautiful Hudson, Wisconsin. Next, we have the coveted package number 915. Here we go. Christmas Eve Mass front row seat. Not only will you have a dedicated pew at the family mass, that's 4 p.m. on Christmas Eve, you will have reserved parking right here by the Boland entrance, and you're going to be greeted by homemade Christmas cutout cookies from our very own Mr. Ken Bakke. Those are the first five items. We'll call out some more later in this program, but keep a close eye on those donations. Next up, we have a beautiful video. If you don't have those tissues nearby, I encourage you to grab them. You know, one thing that was so important to us as we were preparing for swing, as we worked with our local businesses, our sponsors, to create products for you. This next video, in fact, was produced, videoed and produced from a teacher at Cretan Durham Hall. 
please take a look at this video. You're going to see some familiar phrases and you're going to be reminded of the dedication of our administrators, of our teachers, and our students. During this COVID pandemic, we were open five days a week and you're going to see how that happened. Take a look. I'm Jane Schmidt, and I'm fortunate to be the principal of Highland Catholic School, even during a pandemic. I have to say we were pretty fast out of the gate last spring, and that's all credit to our uh, tech guru, Katie Atlas, who somehow uh, realized that this was all going to be unfolding so quickly and spent time training the teachers on Google Meet and how to run a distance classroom. So we really didn't have to use the governor's time to set up and get ready to go. We were ready to go. My name is Delvin Tashney. Uh, I am in eighth grade and I have been at High C for five years. When I was told that it was going to be back to in-person learning, I was a little bit concerned that it might be too soon. But when I learned how we were doing it, and when I learned that there were going to be pods instead of classes, and masks mandated, and that the teachers would move around instead of the students, I felt a lot better. Man, my eighth grade year, it has been a blast. They put me in a pod with some of my closest, closest friends, um, and it, it has been a lot of fun. Uh, much more than I thought it would be. I think socializing with my friends is something that helps me get through this year. It is staying... Well, we just had a technical glitch tonight, everyone. We guarantee you, you're gonna see the swing video, but we're not gonna take any more time. This is an important video. We're excited to show it to you, but we're all human. Technology glitches happen. We're going to bring it to you if we can for this show, but we guarantee you, we're gonna push that video out to all of you so you all have a wonderful opportunity to witness really the magic that happened with our school in response to COVID and frankly, the incredible response of our students who performed so beautifully academically throughout. I wanted to call out the students have had some really special ways of helping to prepare for swing. There was an event that was brought back this year. It was called Penny Wars. It's a really fun activity in which the students can come in. They can put pennies in a bucket and you know what? They can throw silver coins in another group's bucket. And anyways, the wars kind of go back and forth and the kids joyfully compete to be the highest earning grade and what they were awarded with is those students who were awarded the highest uh, amount um, were able to be treated uh, to a magician. All the students could see it, but those grades with the highest amount from the Penny Wars got a special viewing. I wanted to point out the Penny Wars. Again, these were coins that were brought in and a few dollars as well. Generated for Swing 2021. $5,702.59. Now that's not something to joke about. That takes commitment. One other piece the students engaged with was a student raffle and a pamper your teacher raffle. Now listen to this. 
every single raffle ticket was $1. We sold 2,268 raffle tickets, and that's the amount of money we generated, $2,268. Combined, $7,970.59, all because of our students. Now, we had some lucky winners, too. From the teacher raffle, Ms. Larissa Fitzgerald received a lovely Pamper Your Teacher basket so we could pamper her a little bit. So congratulations to Ms. Fitzgerald. And then we had two student winners. The first winner was Mabel. She won three, a $300 Target gift card. The second winner was Adele. Adele was awarded a $50 Menchie's gift card. Those winners were announced on Friday. So congratulations to all of the students for participating and specifically those winners. Okay, next up we have the tuition raffle. So I'd like to invite Mrs. Jane Schmidt. She's going to pull the four lucky winners. You know, it's a better party when you're all here, but we're making the best of it. And I have to say, all the times I ask for money, I actually get to give some away. So the first drawing is for $250, which is probably a target run. Let's see who wins that. I know this guy, Larry Ritter, congratulations. All your years on the buildings and grounds paid off. Um, give me a call at school and we'll make arrangements for you to get your 250 bucks to spend on those grandkids. Thanks, Larry, for participating. Next up, five big ones. Let's have a winner. I think the added drama helps. And this winner is $500, Lisa Huber. Lisa Huber, give me a call at school, we'll give you your five big bills. And now $750, let's see how talented I am at this one. <laughs> a lot of tickets there. I know, it's wonderful. Oh, this is a fun one too. Mary Jo William, congratulations. You are going, well, you're not going home. You're not here. You're at home, and I'm going to give you $750. Thanks for supporting Highland Catholic School. And now, the big draw, $1,000, or better yet, a year's worth of tuition. That is priceless. Let's go for it. Well, first of all, let me tell you, we're buying a new raffle barrel because we're not doing that again. And this is so exciting. One of our favorite, favorite people. We have many. Sister Mary Fran Allen, you just won $1,000. Congratulations. You're a former teacher, and we always love to see your smiley face. Way to go. Thanks for supporting the school. Thanks to all of you. And now that I've given money away, 
please do remember to support our strong community. We're so lucky to be part of this place. Have a great night and back to Amy. Our AV team has assured me, and guys, I'm putting you on the spot. We are back up with our swing video. Take a look. I'm Jane Schmidt, and I'm fortunate to be the principal of Highland Catholic School, even during a pandemic. I have to say we were pretty fast out of the gate last spring, and that's all credit to our uh, tech guru, Katie Atlas, who somehow uh, realized that this was all going to be unfolding so quickly and spent time training the teachers on Google Meet and how to run a distance classroom. So we really didn't have to use the governor's time to set up and get ready to go. We were ready to go. My name is Delvin Tashney. Uh, I am in eighth grade and I have been at High C for five years. When I was told that it was going to be back to in-person learning, I was a little bit concerned that it might be too soon. But when I learned how we were doing it, and when I learned that there were going to be pods instead of classes, and masks mandated, and that the teachers would move around instead of the students, I felt a lot better. Man, my eighth grade year, it has been a blast. They put me in a pod with some of my closest, closest friends, um, and it, it has been a lot of fun. Uh, much more than I thought it would be. I think socializing with my friends is something that helps me get through this year. It is, staying six feet apart, it is still fun to be around people that, you know, I really like being around. Daddy Hyder in kindergarten. When Dad drops me off, I go in, I go in from the school, go have tent checks and go get, and go, and, and wash my hands and go get ready. The masks aren't really a big deal, we still have fun. I like reading books in my, in my class, especially when I read it to the fish. My name is Sarah Scoville. I teach fourth grade, and I counted it up. This is my 20th year at Highland Catholic, uh, but 28 years teaching all together. I was happy, uh, really happy that I'd be able to see the kids again, but I was also super nervous, and my head was spinning with questions, big questions, small questions. Uh, it, the whole thing seemed like an impossible puzzle to solve. Where are we going to put all these kids? How are we going to make the scheduling work? But somehow or another we pulled it together. We were uh, moving people around the library, music, performing arts, and Spanish teachers all gave up their space. We moved classes in there for third grade and fourth grade and seventh grade. We were measuring rooms, trying to figure out how many desks we can fit exactly where they can go. It made it a little bit challenging, but, but it's working and it seems more normal now. I think getting in in the morning is a lot of fun because I get to go back to school. It's, it's like another, it's another start, if you will. Um, and I get to see everybody again and I know that it's just gonna be another great day. The highlight for sure has been the kids and you learn to see their eyes smile. You can't see it from their masks, but their faces still light up and you can see it. And you hear them laugh and you know they're happy to be here. I love the teachers at Highland Catholic. Honestly, the staff are amazing. I have so much gratitude for my colleagues and the amount that they support me and they have my back. I've come to realize that I'm teaching with some of my best friends. It's all the credit to the teachers. I can't thank them enough. Um, we talk about this awesome community and being a strong community, and it was on the backs of those teachers. I can't thank them enough. We all should thank them. They are just a great force. You know, you recognize as we read, as we see in the news, some of the challenges we've had really as a nation in getting our kids to school. And Sean and I are reminded, really, of the pleasure it is to be a part of our community that's been able to make this investment. It's incredible. As you're looking uh, at your screens right now, I'm gonna encourage you, press that strong community fund button now, give what you can. Our next speakers are friends rooted in nearly 50 years of a Catholic foundation. 
These are two men that grew up together, they're neighbors, and they've chosen Highland Catholic for their children. And I'll tell you, you know, often, this is certainly true for me and Sean, sometimes couples look more alike the more years they're married. I'm gonna suggest to you that Patrick Harris and Dennis Rosemark look more alike the more years that they're friends. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here tonight, Pat. Dennis. Thanks, Amy, so much. <laughs> Thank you for the introduction, sir. Yeah, I have to say that was, a, that was an epic recovery on the video, by the Bad. way. Very nicely done. So. And you're right about almost 50 years. Yeah. Um, again, I'm Pat Harris, and this is Dennis Rosemark. Dennis and, and about 49 years ago, not 50 years, uh, Dennis and I walked through the front door of Immaculate Heart of Mary grade school in St. Paul into the first grade. Where we had the same teacher, Mrs. Strife. And Dennis was a touch of a troublemaker, but we didn't break any windows or anything like that, yeah. just so we know that. But <laughs> no, no, yeah, no, no windows broken at that time. And so, but the next eight years at Immaculate Heart of Mary, it was the experience of a lifetime. We had a small school. We had incredibly tight families in a very tight knit okay. neighborhood. We had incredible teachers and staff. And in the end, we really had a community that made a difference in our lives, a small community that stayed together, that made a difference for all the students and the families. IHM was a special place, but alas, time went by, the doors closed. And fast forward uh, to today. Dennis and I both live right here. And yes, in about a month, I'm gonna be living right across the street from Dennis. and. Dennis and I both have, uh, and our wives, our, Laura mm -hmm. and Jenny, both have uh, four children. Yep. And so when we were looking for a school, as Jenny shared earlier, we wanted IHM. We found that in Highland Catholic. IHM was a community, and that was very important to us. And like IHM, Highland Catholic is about a community. And let me tell you what this community has meant to the Harris family. Um, our kids came to this school uh, midstream. Um, our Daniel started in sixth grade or seventh grade, and Joey and Andrew just started this year. Um, two of our boys just started again this year. And they arrived at the school in the middle of a pandemic. You know, what a great time to meet new kids in a school. We're masked and you're in pods and you're doing everything you can to be safe, but you know, a challenging time for new kids to meet new people. But go back to our IHM days. They took out uh, a challenge. Dennis, and um, you know how bad it is? Sometimes I call Dennis Daniel, by the way, and I call my kid Dennis. <laughs> we gotta, <laughs> He's fortunate. We've got to stop know, that. We've got to stop that. <laughs> um, but the classmates here um, for our two children when they got here um, were gracious uh, and inviting. Um, right. and, then our, and then our Joey got sick, okay? Um, uh, and this entire community uh, really came together in a remarkable fashion, um, an incredible outpouring. It was letters, it was cards, it was visits, and all these things um, that have truly made a difference um, for our Joey and for our family in, in, so, in so many ways. Now I tell you, if I could bottle up Joey's attitude and spread it around the world, we'd all be living in a better place. And you know, on behalf of Laura and Joey and our whole family, it was this community, it was this thing that Dennis and I had at IHM that we have at Highland Catholic that, that really made the difference uh, for our joy. And I can just tell you um, how grateful we are as a family for that. So um, it's what we wanted, it's, it's right. what we found here. Um, and as we sit here tonight, and we're here to raise money, um, we need your support to keep this special feeling, to keep this community around for another generation. So we're asking you to keep bidding, because Amy's keeping the bidding going, and then keep giving and have a great evening. We're done. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. of community. And I'll note, very first meeting with Mrs. Jane Schmidt, she's the one who introduces you to that sense of feeling, that sense of community. And we are so grateful to have our children in a school where she serves as the principal, where she has all of the teachers foster that level of connectivity with our children that makes all the difference. Thank you, Mrs. Schmidt. 
hey, we have big news that I just learned about. We have some tremendous donations that have come through. In the past few minutes, we've had donations from Gwen Brioche, $100, Fran Ring, $200, Casey and Amy Haffenbreck, $369.25, Judge Bill Leary, Rebecca Haas, $400. But I'm going to tell you something. We have a very generous community member that has made a commitment for a $10,000 match. If we're able to raise $10,000 as a community, that individual match it. That's tremendous. Please give what you can. We're so grateful. Hey, our next speaker tonight is an alum of Highland Catholic and Visitation School. Mary is now finishing her second year at the University of St. Thomas. Welcome, Mary. Hello, thank you. As my mom introduced me, I'm a sophomore at St. Thomas, double majoring in mechanical engineering in German. Reflecting back on my education at Highland Catholic, I take away three major things. The first being Ms. Soboda's sixth grade world history class. The second being Mrs. Nelson's touch number uh, technique when it comes to counting. I speak up a little bit. As well as um, my fifth grade teacher's insistence on cursive writing. Now first, um, in high school, I was able to take Latin and AP European history, where I frequently used all of the lessons I learned from Ms. Sabota's class. And just last semester, I was taking my art history class, where I not only was able to name all three Greek columns, but I was also able to skip a homework assignment because we were assigned to watch the cathedral documentary that Ms. Sabota showed us in sixth grade. Second, um, I was able to use my math counting, tech, my touch number technique taught by Mrs. Nelson in my daily math equations as I use in my classes. And lastly, of course, I use my cursive handwriting. As a punishment for talking too much in fifth grade, Mrs. Carlton required that my class write in cursive throughout the whole school year. And upon entering AP classes in high school, I was told by my teacher that students who wrote in cursive actually score better on the exams. So needless to say, I was happy to brush up on my old skills. So once again, thank you to my teachers at Highland Catholic, and thank you to this gracious community for putting me in the spot where I am today. Please donate all you can. Thank you, Mary. Say, as a part of striving to create uh, an engaging virtual experience for, uh, for you, we introduced two things this year. First, we had curbside pickup meals that I know the Murphys picked up our meals today. Absolutely fantastic food from Italian Eatery. The other item was the gala in the box. Absolutely terrific. We had donations from Schuler Shoes, RF Moeller, We Are Nuts. We had terrific items from Extended Exposure, Stainless Steel, beer tumblers, and a terrific variety four-pack of beer made possible from the coordination and support of Sarah and Justin. Thank you for all of your support, Ashton family. Hey, we have five lucky winners from the gala in a box. Five individuals were randomly selected, and in their gala box were $75 gift cards from Schuler Shoes. Every other gift box received a $20 gift card. So those winners of the $75 gift cards include Kate and Peter Pico, Maggie O'Connell, Liz and John Keating, Lulu Villiam and Sarah Phelps. Congratulations to you. Hey, we have a few more items we wanna quickly call out. I'll probably do it in abbreviated format now. The sixth premium auction item that's number 908 that's the wall of wine enjoy a bottle of wine every week for a year choosing a bottle of wine never got easier next item 
number 906, the Madeline Island Log Home, five night stay. Enjoy a beautiful, relaxing stay on Madeline Island, located in northern Wisconsin. The principal's purse, let me tell you, this was a terrific idea introduced a few years back and is always one of the most popular items. A beautiful coach purse. This is the exciting part. We have donors throughout our community that filled that purse with so many, many gift cards. So excited for you to bid on that principal's purse and I hope the lucky winner can bring it home at 10 o'clock tonight. Okay, our next speaker is Sue Kelly. Sue comes from another legacy family at Highland Catholic. Sue, along with her five siblings, attended St. Leo's in Highland Catholic, and her parents were very engaged in our community. Excited for you to hear from Sue. Welcome. Thank you, Amy. As she said, I'm Sue Kelly. My family joined St. Leo's Parish in 1968 before I was born. Um, as she said, I'm the youngest of six children. We all went through St. Leo's, which obviously became Highland Catholic. My parents were very involved in all aspects of the church and school. My dad was head of the finance committee. My mom started Meals on Wheels, the prime timer, golden timers. I can't remember what it's called. but. Prime timers, thank you, Amy. I know my grandma was in it and we took her to church every week. Uh, but one of the more important things, she started what was called the Balcony Exchange. It was a secondhand store that was located on the balcony above the cafeteria. It was open one day a week on Thursdays. And at the end of the year, they'd have a big sale and clear everything out. And then the um, principal and the teachers would submit ideas for things that they could buy with that money. So really, in essence, it was the original fund to need, which we've done at Swing for many years. Uh, one notable thing that they bought was when I was in sixth grade, they bought six computers. And now, mind you, this is about 1982. Uh, no other schools in the area had computers. They were big television screens, and our uh, computer course was part of our math class. I think we did it maybe twice a week. Uh, as I, I got older, I moved, I stayed in Highland Park, as most of us do. And uh, when my daughter was ready for kindergarten, of course, I was going to send here, her here. As part of growing up with a family that was very involved, I also got very involved. I was on a number of different committees, as well as chairing uh, the silent auction portion of swing. So I know how much work Amy and Sean and everyone else has put in, so I want to thank everyone for doing that. A uh, little bit about my daughter and her education, because I think this is important. Uh, when she went here, the classes and the teaching level is at such a um, high excellence that when most of the Highland Catholic kids get to high school, they're able to test out of a lot of the freshman level classes and start in the sophomore level. And then that means they can take AP classes, which in turn means when they get to college, they already have credit. So my daughter was able to start as a sophomore in college, basically credit-wise. And then uh, her junior year, she could start her master classes. So by the time she got her B BA in politics, she was halfway done with her master's in politics and only had to go one more year for that. So that was really important that she had that foundation from Highland Catholic in order for all of that to happen. Uh, my family always talks about Highland Catholic and St. Leo's and the stories. A couple quick stories from when we were younger. Um, when my parents would travel for my dad's work, uh, the principal, Sister Jean, and our raffle winner tonight, Sister Mary Fran, would come and stay with our family. And that just seemed totally normal to us that the principal would stay with us. And uh, one such occasion, we had a huge snowstorm. Every school in the Twin Cities canceled, but Highland Catholic did not. And since the principal was staying with us, we all got carted down to school. And uh, we were about 
uh, maybe one of 10 kids that were here that day. But uh, Highland Catholic means a lot to my family. And uh, here tonight, uh, talk about family fair. Pat Harris, who spoke, is my first cousin. And Tim Flynn is married to my cousin Jamie, who I work for at Extend Exposure. As Amy said earlier, we help create the uh, gala in the box bags. Uh, so I'm thrilled that everyone logged in tonight and that the swing tradition is continuing. And as everyone keeps saying, bid, bid, bid. Thank you, Amy. Hey, we've had some additional donations that come in that I really want to call out. Michelle Doyle, $400. Angel Fitzsimmons, $250. Becky and Jamie Galliato, $250. Phil Eston, $250. Jean Olson, $500. Father Paul, a lot. Wow. Thank you so much to our donors. We have a $10,000 match, everyone. Please give generously. Hey, our next speaker tonight, I'm so excited, Tom Farnham. What we've been striving to do is capture the generations of high C. Tom was baptized at St. Leo's, and I'm so glad you're here tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Uh, good evening, my name's Tom Farnham. I will not be the most dynamic speaker this evening, but I will be the oldest one. I was baptized at uh, St. Leo's in July of 1950. I then attended kindergarten through seventh grade at St. Leo's School. Then my father had a job and we were all transferred to Morristown, New Jersey. So I went to a Benedictine school out in Morristown. And then I was the prodigal son and came home and uh, attended St. John's and graduated from there. And by the way, one of my classmates at St. John's was our esteemed and legendary teacher, Ken Bakke. And we're, for about the last 20 years, have lived uh, across the street from each other. But I was blessed to have 17 years of Catholic education, and one of the most important lessons I learned was from the Benedictines. The rule of St. Benedict is the operating guide for how monks should lead their lives. And one of the pillars of the rule is community, a sense of community, the importance of community, and the responsibility of being a member of a community. So over the years, I've been on the Archdiocesan School Board, uh, the High Sea School Board, Parish Council for Lumen Christi, Finance Committee for St. Leo's and Lumen Christi, and a Eucharistic Minister. And these activities have just helped me to fulfill my responsibility as a member of our faith community. So here's a check, by the way, for you. I continue my support. Hopefully you'll help with the match. And uh, hopefully everyone out there will show your support of Catholic education and high C by making a very generous contribution. And I want to quickly special thank out to Amy and Sean for the masterful job they did in putting the show together tonight. A special shout out to Jane Schmidt, who for many years has been our distinguished principal. And we shall not forget Father Paul Fila, who has been a very good shepherd of our community. So I'll leave you with this thought. May the light of Christ shine upon you and drown out the shadows of darkness that surround us in everyday life. God bless you all and keep you safe. Thank, Thank you. you we have had more cash donations come in, everyone. Margaret George, $250. Louise Rosemark, $200. Tom and Florence Farnham, $1,000. Thank you so much. Hey, I'm gonna make a couple of announcements before our next speaker starts right here. So thank you, Sydney and Liam. Hold tight just a second. Hey, we have some more premier items available for you. We have a little uh, over two hours left for bidding. Please take a special look for these items. Package number 910, front row seat at the 7 p.m. Christmas program. This includes reserve parking, everyone. Package number 913, that's dinner for eight at the Lexington. Enjoy a beautiful night with friends at the Lexington. Package number 132, that's a Weber gas grill. 
Package number 903 is the Solo Stove. It's a Yukon fire pit, and I'll make special note, that comes to you from past swing chairs. Package number 900, that's the exclusive car line drop-off and pickup. Forget those lines on Boland Avenue, pull right up on Hillcrest, and you'll be met by one of the preschool teachers that will let you in. Let go of those lines. Package number 904 is the Big Egg Grill. Package number 908 is the Pool and Yacht Club one-year membership. Hey, this is a hot one. Package number 907, Agriculture Hot Lunch for the 2021 2022 school year for our next school year. And the last premier auction item I'll call out is package number 909. That's the inflatable stand up paddle board. I learned how to do yoga on a paddle board this past summer, and I assure you, if I can do it, so can you. So take a close look at those premier auction items. Keep an eye on them. Remember, you have that auto um, bidding function available in Greater Giving. The hotline is still available for you, answered by Mrs. Katie Atlas. So bid and bid often, everyone. Right next to me, we have Sydney Haffenbreck. Sydney is a second grader at Highland Catholic, and she is joined by her brother, Liam. Liam, I'll tell you, was in a soccer tournament today, so we hope you're doing well. You look strong, Liam. Thanks for being here, the two of you. Go ahead. Good evening. My name is Sydney Heffenbeck. I'm a second grader from Highland Catholic School. These are, and this is my brother, Liam, from uh, Creighton Durham Hall. Um, he used to come here, but now he's in ninth grade, and here are a few reasons why I like the school. Number one, I like Highland Catholic because I make new friends every day. Number two, I like Highland Catholic because we have fun challenges, for example, Penny Wars, Marathon, and a Catholic School Week. Number three, I like Highland Catholic because we are available to two parks. The closer one is for pre-K and kindergarten. The other one is for first grade and up. Number four, I like Highland Catholic because our teachers make fun, um, make learning fun. Like Mrs. Williams had us make 3D shapes out of toothpicks and marshmallows. Number five. I like Highland Catholic because we st if we stand up and help someone, we get to get a super friend badge. Number six, I like Highland Catholic because the teachers inspire us to make stories. Number seven, I like Highland Catholic because the teachers is always open to help or answer your question. Number eight, I like Highland Catholic because ha we, they have really good hot lunch and you can pack a cold lunch too. My f pizza day is my favorite day. These are half of the reasons why I like Highland Catholic School. Please donate to keep our school going and strong. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, we've had two more donations just come in. From New York City, Anne Marie Foss, $250. From the Villages in Florida, Mary Bugby, $100. One of the benefits of having a virtual environment is we're able to broaden our audience. So thank you from near and far for your generous donations. Hey, we have a treat for you now. We have two alum of Highland Catholic, Meg and Sophie. They're going to join us in singing Leonard Cohen's Alleluia. Following their song, we're going to have vintage video from the Swing Daddies. So on behalf of Sean and I, we want to thank you for participating in 2021 Swing. Help us make that match of $10,000. 
We're so grateful that you participated tonight, and we hope you join us in enjoying the music that's coming your way now. Thanks, everybody. In a recent movie, has anybody seen the movie Flushed Away? I, I would say one or two. Well, this song was played at the very end of the movie, 
when at the very happy part of the movie, kind of like Shrek uh, did the uh, I'm a Believer song. So the name of the song is called Proud Mary.
application from this song. We're going to do a tune called Shout.
song is actually new to our, uh, our set list, but it features uh, Pam Jameson on vocals. The song is called Heat Wave. Favorite song from the third grade. Song's called La Bamba. <laughs> <laughs> 